this computer. Perfect. All right, we are officially recording. Um, and none of you are in the state of Maryland, correct? Good, just making sure. Um, there are legal things. Maryland's a stickler on these things. Um, so anyway, so basically that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be looking at, wait a minute. <laughs> you just double check in there to make sure you're not in Maryland. I'm looking up. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, that's hilarious. Okay. A few people looking out their window, make sure they do not get carried off to Maryland. By the way, I'm so sorry if you did. Um, I was actually born there. But, uh, so here we go. So in, um, so basically they go ahead and they run this, they create this typology. So if you guys send me your emails to prmatt at firstunitedelca.org, I will send you a pre-made spreadsheet and the questionnaire, you just answer it on the spreadsheet and it will do all your addition and math for you. Unless you love doing addition and math and then you don't use the spreadsheet and you know you can do it by hand too. <laughs> so I highly recommend it. Um, it is an Excel spreadsheet. If you're like, man, that is the most boring thing. This is why I don't take BuzzFeed quizzes. Just skip it and listen to the, uh, <laughs> listen to the um, descriptions as we go through it and it will give you sort of, and you can sort of be like, oh, that does sound like me or that doesn't. The one thing I do want to let people know right off the bat is that while most people have a primary group that they're part of, most people also have a secondary group and sometimes sort of a tertiary group or a third group, okay? So you're not just one type of person and, and the way the math works out, it will give you sort of like, percentage matches. Um, so like for myself, I actually have a tie essentially between two worlds, but then don't have a third world of the five. And world is just shorthand for archetype. Okay. Ever, any questions before we start to dive into this a little bit? All right. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. If if you can't hear me, please speak up because I've had that happen once and I forget why. But it's a brave new world out there. Okay. Then I. All right, can you all hear me? Yes, no, maybe. Yes. Yes. All right. I know that if one of you can hear me, all of you should be able to hear me. All right, so we're going to go ahead and jump. Ah, oh, there we go. I got a thumbs up. That's what I like to see. All right, so we're going to jump into the theological world. Um, now, there's sort of two ways to look at religious experience, okay? Um, there's sort of two ways to look at religious experience. I, I, by the way, I had to shrink everybody, so if you have a question, just speak up and interrupt me. I, I do, I, I, I'm totally okay with being interrupted, okay? because that's where the best conversations happen. So two ways to look at religious experience. One way is top down. That is where some sort of expert or authority says, this is how you should experience God, okay? Uh, basically, that's the role of a the theologian. A the theologian says, this is right, that is wrong. You can do this, you can't do that. Um, and it can be more loose or more strict, but essentially theologians go, I'm the expert. I will tell you what you're experiencing or how to interpret your experience, okay? Spirituality, however, is a different way of looking at religious experience. Um, and those of you who hear me preach, I make this distinction a lot. Spirituality is really a bottom-up approach in the sense of it's all about I had this encounter with the divine and I found it good or maybe I found it bad or I found it whatever, fill in the emotion. Um, and I want to search to figure out what it means, or I want to be able to express what I experienced. I mean, it can go lots of different ways. There's sort of an endless number of ways you can go with that. Um, the big key difference and the sort of thing, the sort of litmus test I use is spirituality always is going to fall into the realm of it's good for me, but may not be for you. And that's okay because it's, an experience I had, which you may or may not have had. Make sense? 
Yes, no? Yes. Yes, okay. Because I'm really good at not making sense. Like I'm <laughs> exceptionally talented at that. So if I ever am not making sense, again, just interrupt me. Where theology is more about saying, about setting these boundaries or rules or whatever. Again, they, theology can be strict, it can be loose, it can be whatever it is. And by the way, it does, I'm not beating on theology because there are things that we would all agree is wrong. Like deciding tomorrow to go kill someone is wrong. Okay, that's a theological statement. If you had an experience of what you believe to be the divine that told you to go murder people, we would not want to affirm that, right? Right. Right, there we go. All right. <laughs> in theology, basically then, a smart person or a person in authority tells people what you should believe or how to interpret, which again, isn't always wrong. In theology, there must, however, be a right and a wrong, and therefore in a conflict, there has to be a right person and a wrong person which is one of the reasons I try to always sort of push theology into those realms where right and wrong are critical, like questions of murder, right? And keep spirituality to be the majority of what we actually experience. So again, sort of there are clearly rights and wrongs and things that have to be true or not to be true. That's the realm of theologians, okay? But 99% of what a Christian is going to experience of the divine doesn't really fall into that theological realm. It really falls into the spiritual realm, right? Like how you pray, there's no right or wrong answer. It's whatever connects you to God. That, so prayer isn't a theological question. It's a spiritual question. Um, and so one of the things I really want to get at is that, you know, um, I saw a little alert that chat's good. Oh, I can't see it on my page. Um, so one of the things I sort of want to note is that like part of the push and pull is that there's sort of this wonderful relativism or wonderful subjectivism to spirituality, which is its strength, but there's, and there is this sort of universalism to theology that is both its strength but just, but for each one of them is both their strength and their weakness. Because theology wants to create rules and therefore when it gets out of control, tries to promote conformity. Spirituality allows for lots of freedom and experimentation, but could in theory get out of control too and lead people to be like, well, I don't know if it's murder. I mean, you know, you know if you wanna murder people, maybe that's your business. You know, you don't wanna go there either, right? Now, granted, I personally think there's much more threat most times from theology than from spirituality, but at least conceptually, it, either one could go to a bad place. Um, and so again, we sort of talked about this a little bit, is that really, it comes from experiences rather than thought. It comes from the land of learning and doing and trying and, in all honesty, succeeding sometimes and failing a lot because we're human. That's how spirituality grows. Spirituality is all about going on this path, doing the things, seeing what works for you, and then not, and then seeing what doesn't work for you. And slowly over time, it builds the mosaic of what Christ is trying to call you to be. And I think most of us have probably experienced that, where we have an idea of like, this is who maybe God wants me to be. We get going and we're like, oh man, that is not where God wants me to be. Or we get going in a direction, go, I don't know if God wants me to go this way. You go that way, and all of a sudden you start to go, yeah, this is not meant to be. You know, and that's part of the Christian life, and part of what it means to live a Christian spirituality. So I actually don't like calling them theological worlds. I like calling them spiritual worlds, because I feel like that's more honest. But the name of the book is Theological World. So, you know, I guess we're stuck with that. Now, the sort of assumption that the book starts with, and it's an assumption that I from experience have seen, which is that most people's spirituality is often, the foundation of it is founded in whatever launched them on their journey. And for most people, that is some sort of crisis. Now the crisis doesn't have to be huge. The crisis doesn't have to be this massive, poignant spiritual fight, though sometimes it is. 
it just has to be something that doesn't make sense. And they just can't stop from heading down that road, scratching that itch, trying to figure it out. Um, and then that causes some sort of spiritual crisis. Again, it could just be a question that eats at them, okay? So it doesn't have to be dramatic, though again, a lot of times it is. And this creates a sort of driver of what they pursue and that driver of whatever that conflict that they have inside then starts to establish the worldview or the way they start to view Christianity, what it sort of drives what they find um, meaningful, what they find ridiculous, what sort of spiritual practices that's going to help them connect, what spiritual practices just fall flat or feel toned down. And so we're going to go through that with each one of the different spiritual worlds. My goal of this is to help all of you guys look into your own personal relationship with God and hopefully find tools um, to A, understand yourself better, but also understand others better. I hope that sort of is a good sort of initial introduction um, to sort of what we're going to be doing over the next number of weeks. Um, uh, this introduction was meant to be a lot shorter than the average class. Average class is going to be like 45 minutes or so. Um, but what are your questions? What are your thoughts? If it helped me to stop hitting, stop the record button, get everyone talking, just let me know and I will do that. It is, right? It is very hard to personalize. Um, it really is hard to sort of get into that. My hope is as we get to some of these descriptions, um, we start to say, hey, that sounds like me. Um, or just as important, hey, that sounds like that person I do not understand. Like, your sister or your brother or your parents or your kids or whatever. So someone wrote in, uh, have, can't figure out when I would have had that why event. I'll give you an example from my own life. So when I was, so I am a two, we'll, we'll get into what that is in the, in the um, third class, okay? Because we're gonna spend one night on each one of the five different worlds. Um, twos are individuals who are driven by, um, who are driven to answer the question of why is the world messed up? So at some point they looked at the world, particularly um, involving either death or the mistreatment of people and said, this is not right. Why is the world like this? Okay. Now me, the starting thing was very, very likely because I had cancer as a child. And so I went into a cancer ward where 50% of the kids who went in didn't come out alive. And so I can really remember saying, why did I make it and this other kid not? That seems messed up. Why is the world like that? Why couldn't God create a world where nobody gets cancer? You know, just suggesting. Okay. And so for me, that started me down that road. But if that's where you start, if what you start with is saying the world is messed up, it's not how it should be, that's already casting your worldview a lot at that point. Because what you're asking is going to be questions about, well, what can we do? How can we make the world better? What can we do to fight this injustice? Look, it's, it's bad over there too. It's not just that people die of cancer and that's ridiculous, but people die of starvation and that's ridiculous. What can we do to stop that? And so for me, like doing service and helping others and talking about justice really feeds me. Okay. Now, my father is a world one character. And again, we're going to get into this. World one folks are folks who feel alien. Okay? They feel like they're an orphan in a strange world. 
Um, they're people who watched E.T. And the person that they most related with was the alien. Okay. They've never felt like they quite fit in this world. They feel like they're always the outsider. Okay. Which makes sense. My father was the son of the surgeon in a working class town in the Rust Belt of New York. So when everyone else was losing their jobs, he was still fine. And so guess what? None of the kids liked him. And so he always felt like an alien because he couldn't relate. Not because there's anything wrong with him or them, but those are two very different lived realities, right? And so he finds great solace in like the daily um, prayers. Like he does morning prayer every day at 6 a.m. He has me my entire life. I have known my dad. I tried it for like a month. It was the most boring thing I have ever done in my life. I just would be like, oh, for, why are we doing this to ourselves? Okay. It's not because I'm right or he's right. It's because in that moment, he feels connected to God. He feels connected to the cosmos. He, for that moment, for that 15 minutes that it takes to do morning prayer, is finally one with the cosmos. But that's because his driver is different than mine. Because I'm like, the cosmos messed up. I don't want to be one with the cosmos. It's unjust and unfair, and we should do something about it. <laughs> okay? Um, and that's just different spiritualities. So that's what we're going to be digging into. Okay. Um, and can it will you be, hear me? yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I, 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 I texted, I feel the same way when, with my Christianity, it was very, it's been very conservative, even in college. Mm -hmm. and I had trouble with the theology versus the spirituality because I was I'm always been leaning towards science mm -hmm. I'm very scientific minded I really love the experimentation aspect of it of uh, being able to create what's there mm -hmm. and for me my connection to God has always been how did God make these things happen? And then we do the research. Mm -hmm. Whereas with, my, with the conservative, it was more mystical. It was on the verge of basically Harry Potter. It was, oh, he magically made this happen. He did this, waved his hand, made that happen. That didn't seem like I could relate to that yeah. at all. Yeah. Absolutely. No, absolutely. No, and I'm the same way. I, I, because one of my drivers is make the world a better place. The first thing I want to do is understand how the world works. And so for me, science is an incredible gift because it's a huge way to answer all sorts of questions about how does the world work and often even why. Right. And for me, it was most important to understand what's the root cause of the problem. Mm-hmm. And in a lot of cases, all I was hearing is thoughts and prayers, not, okay, that what invoked this hate, this sickness, this despair? And, and, not a, and instead of dressing it, we're just passing off to God. And I feel like God's just looking down on us and going, I gave you two hands. I gave you a mind. What's <laughs> holding you back? You and me are probably in the same world on that. <laughs> right. Absolutely. Absolutely. At least that's my take. No, and and there is no wrong take. Like now you I'm betting you're probably another world two person with me on this. Right. Um but we'll, well see. I can, yeah. And I'm a tie between world two and world five, uh, which is a different whole different world. All right. So, yeah. Any other questions or um, can you all send me in a quick email saying, hey, can I have the assessment and I'll send it right to you at the end of, at the end of. 
everything? Sure. Yeah, I think it's interesting. I think it's interesting, Matt, that well, just coming off of mentoring last night with our confirmands mm -hmm. and just seeing all um, now I've had five mentees the last five years and they all have very different experiences mm -hmm. and including myself and our spirituality, you know, how, how did you get here? You know, what, what drove you to this? And it, it and I find it really interesting to have kids that are pretty much from the same backgrounds, yeah. you know, and, and we live in Sheboygan. I mean, mm -hmm. pretty middle class, pretty, um, you know, there's food on the table, there's, but very different spiritual journeys. Yeah. And I, I find that really interesting. Um, but, you know, for me, and I think you and I have talked about this, for me, one of the, I thought I was one way, and then went on a mission trip. Mm -hmm. And then that changed it changed the way I looked at things absolutely, and, and looked at myself. So I, that was one of those aha moments where I'm a, you know, type A personality that I, you know, I think I'm going to do this. And then God goes, no, <laughs> yep. you know, you're not there. I wasn't there to help them. They were actually there to help me yep. understand and, and connect more with God that, and here I thought we were there to help them. And it was that porch time. Mm -hmm. It was that getting to know that family and those connections and their faith and how that changed how I looked at my faith and how it changed me. Mm -hmm. So I think those are, it, you think you're coming along down this one path. And even at my age, you can go down a totally different path and be, you know, maybe an aha moment. Uh, uh, maybe you need to get back to, this is what I really want you to do. This yeah. is what you need to focus on and understand that Absolutely. you don't have control over it, but mm -hmm. you do have service and you want, and that's why I like the service part of it too now. Absolutely. And, and the reality is spiritualities change over time. So like, as we go on our quest, there's, it's natural that if you had taken this 20 years ago, you might have come out with a different world. Just like people can move from being extroverts to introverts or, you know, whatever, over periods of time. Same thing with this. And it's probably even more elastic. It's more, you're more able to move quickly between ones. Because any major crisis, and again, I'm using crisis in a very technical way. Anything that really just pushes you towards a direction like a service trip can all of a sudden reset you into a new theological world, which is the other thing I have found useful about looking at spirituality this way. Um, because I'll have times when maybe I'll interact more as a five or more as a two or even occasionally as a three. Um, but that's just because of the world I might be in at a given point. Cool. Um, then if you guys can just email me if you want those. And even if you don't want to take the assessment, the assessment has really fun little descriptions of each one of the worlds in it. Um, I'll send it to you as a PDF and um, along with the um, thing. I think we just lost somebody. We just lost Beth. Um, is that cool with everybody? All right. Well, I will see you guys next week, 7.30 p.m., same login information. So you, it's just, I've set it for the whole rest of the year. Uh, if it's pub theology, it's different laws. So it's set by class. Okay. 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 All right. Well, I will see you guys invite friends. They can totally come into this on <laughs> class one really easy. All right. And definitely email me again, prmatt at firstunitedelca.org. Sounds okay. good. Thank you. All right. Have a great evening and God bless everybody. Thanks, Thank you. Matt. Bye. Bye. Bye.